All right, so in this topic, what we're looking at is uh, product life cycles. So this is topic 5.5. And just like almost any natural process, a, a product goes through a, uh, a life cycle. And those there's stages in that life cycle. And so uh, the stages that we need to know is uh, launch, growth, maturity, and decline. Um, sometimes launch is called introduction. So that would be introduction to the market. So, you know, you can follow this sort of graph. And this is the, you know, revenue, profit, and also... Um, over time, right? So you can see that as as um, something's new to the market, it's going to have lower uh, revenue, but over time, it's going to grow. Its revenue grows, profits grow. When it reaches maturity, the revenue and profits are going to drop off and then decline. They obviously fall to um, their lowest uh, point. So this is um, the product life cycle. We'll go through these stages right now. So First things first, uh, the first stage is uh, actually before the launch would be designers developing new ideas, prototypes, and finally a finished product. And that's taking an idea and bringing it to the launch stage. So this is where you are coming up with an idea, you know, creating design specifications, creating um, designs for it, you know, with prototypes, testing the prototypes, pre-production, and then you finally launch that actual product. So those are the stages of, of design before you even launch um, your, your product. Um, once you've launched your product, what you want to do is you want to hype it up. You want people to know about your product, right? So this is where you're going to use your marketers. So your marketers are going to come in and they're going to try and capture the imagination of your target audience, right? So they're going to try to get um, your product, you know, people excited about buying your product, okay? Uh, this is a, a good video that, that talks about how to launch a product, how the plan to launch a product goes. But there's a lot of, of uh, time and effort and thought that needs to go into launching a product. So uh, do have a look at this and uh, think about that as as we're launching. This would be the, the early stage, the introduction or launch of a product, okay? Um, pricing is an important way to um, sort of capture market share. And I want you to think about um, how 3M gave away Post-its. So if you think back to the video that you watched about Post-its, you'll see that 3M actually just gave them away to companies and that made people want them. Um, it, it sort of said, oh, the people are like, well, these are super useful. I need more of these. And so they, they captured market share that way. And then they can start to increase the price based on that. Um, also, you know, post-its now come in lots of different colors. And we'll talk about what that, that's sort of getting towards the maturity aspect of, of uh, a product. You can also set your pricing high for premium products, right? So this is where you would say, actually, I'm not going to set my prices low to try to capture a large market share. I'm going to keep my product high to keep it exclusive. And this is what Tesla is doing right now. Tesla, you know, Tesla cars are expensive and when you have it, it's got a certain like, you know, uh, you know, we would say cachet, like you are, it shows, it's conspicuous wealth. It shows that you're rich if you can afford a Tesla. And so that is actually really important too, that, that some premium products, you want to set your price high so that not everybody has them and that makes them feel more exclusive. Okay, growth. So once you have launched a product, you want to grow its market share. In order to do that, you need to advertise, right? To stimulate product purchases. So you want people to know about your product. You want them to be excited about your product. You want them to be able to uh, go out and buy your products, right? So you're going to advertise. Um, word of mouth is a very, very powerful tool. You know, uh, people start talking about, oh, did you, did you get the new this or new that? Or, you know, it can be in anything. In, in movies, word of mouth is so important in movies. So word of mouth is, is basically when somebody um, speaks highly of a product. And so that's a very powerful tool. Online reviews, right? That, that's just, if you go on to Amazon and look at a product and read the reviews, then you can get a good understanding of, of how the product is and, and you know, how the product is in use. And that'll give you um, some good information. So online reviews are very important. Um, continue changes to a product to stimulate additional purposes, uh, purchases. So like for instance, um, I said I'd come back to this, but you know, uh, Post-its originally came in yellow and only yellow. 
And now they come in a variety of colors and sizes so that, you know, you that's going to help to stimulate additional purchase, uh, purchases, right? People are like, oh, I actually need a variety of different colors of post-its. And so they're going to buy that variety of colors rather than just the yellow. So that's a, that's a way to, to change a product to stimulate additional purchases. All right, when you get to the maturity section of the product life cycle, this is when sales start to slow, right? So this is where you have a really good market saturation. So your, your, your product has penetrated the market and, and it's, it's, you know, everywhere, right? Um, you know, I can think of back in the day with iPods. iPods were at market uh, just probably before the um, iPhone was launched. It was pretty much at market like market saturation. Everybody had some sort of MP3 player, whether it was an iPod or some other MP3 player, right? Um, and then you start to see pricing being reduced, right? So you're trying to say, okay, everybody needs to buy more of these. So let's reduce them, reduce the price. Let's change the colors of them. So maybe you know, one day I want a blue one, and one day I want a green one, and one day I want a silver one. So you're trying to do something to increase market sales. Um, so that's pricing and it also might be um, uh, changing the product. And you get to decline. So this, this happens with pretty much every product. The product is going to decline. People are just going to say, or, you know, things move on, technology gets better, etc, etc. So that's, this is where pricing is radically reduced. So you want to try to unload inventory. You know, I, I, I put the example here of a uh, of, uh, a VHS player, right? So this plays VHS tapes. Some of you may not even know what that is anymore, but VHS tapes used to be the way that that we watched, you know, home movies. Um, and so, you know, these are really obsolete at this point because of of um, streaming services like Netflix and Hulu and every well, everything streams now, right? So these are pretty much obsolete. Um, and so, you know, in order to sell them, you're going to have to reduce the, the price to almost nothing. And that's just to get rid of any inventory that you might have. You might also try to um, add, add features to something like a, so a VCR, right? VHS players, VCRs, well, they added DVD players in there, right? So try to increase the sales of those things. And then eventually, you know, when neither of these things are needed, like DVDs are also at the point where they are essentially obsolete, that product is going to be discontinued. All right, now obsolescence. Obsolescence is a noun, right? So it's the noun form of obsolete, which is an adjective. And this is the process of becoming obsolete or outdated and no longer used. So for instance, this tape right here, this is a, a cassette tape. This is the way that we used to listen to music back in the day. And these things are definitely obsolete, right? There is, you know, very little use, uh, and, and probably most of you have never actually used one. So this is an obsolete product. But for years, it was essential. You know, it was it had huge market penetration. Now, one of the things you can do is something called planned obsolescence. So this is when a product becomes outdated as a conscious act, either to ensure continued market or to ensure that uh, safety factors and new technologies can be incorporated into later, later versions of the product. And of course, Apple is notorious for this, right? Like it's, you know, these, these have iPhones become obsolete as they go and, 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 and Apple does this intentionally. So for instance, they will stop updating the iOS system of older phones. So like if you have an iPhone 4, you cannot update the iOS on that phone which means that you no longer have access to um, current apps because the current app developers don't develop apps for the um, iOS system that works on an iPhone 4, right? So that's called planned obsolescence. Basically what they're saying is, well, if you want the newest apps, then you've got to upgrade to the, upgrade to the newer um, versions of, of an iPhone. And you can see on this, this just picture is obsolete because, you know, where are iPhones now? Like 11 or something like that? This is back when they had them in iPhone uh, 6, right? So these are, Apple has, you know, essentially planned the op os uh, obsolescence of their products. And now people, once they're in that sort of Apple universe, so once they've, they've got everything is Apple, they've got an Apple computer, they've got an uh, iPhone, they've got an iPad, you know, the chances are when their phone becomes obsolete, they're going to buy the latest Apple phone, which means that they are going to keep their money within Apple 
And so that's the plan of Apple is to make sure that you, you continue to buy their phones, right? If you bought an iPhone 4 and it was always good all, you know, for years, you know, for 20 years, that's the only phone you needed, then the Apple would quickly go out of business. So they're basically planning to make that phone obsolete so that you can, so that you'll buy the, the latest phones. Um, functional obsolescence. So this is just over time, products wear out, right? Like gears and springs and everything, they just wear out. And, you know, eventually parts become um, unavailable um, and the product no longer works as the way it originally did. Also, if a service is vital to the functioning and it's no longer available, it becomes obsolete. So this is something called functional obsolescence, where essentially things just wear out. And this happens to cars all the time. Cars, you know, car parts, they make the car parts, but eventually they just stop making those car parts for cars that are older. You're not going to be able to find, you know, a Ford Model T um, carburetor. I don't even know if they have carburetors, but you, you know, you're not going to be able to find that uh, nowadays because they're no longer made. You have to basically cannibalize that from an older or from a car, um, from another car. Now, there are some people who are doing an interesting project out in the deserts uh, in the U.S., and they're, they're trying to make something called the 10,000-year clock, which is interesting. It's basically trying to make something that won't wear out for at least 10,000 years, right? Um, so it's, this is kind of an interesting video, and it, it talks about the opposite of functional obsolescence. You're trying to make something that will not become obsolete, um, and it is, like I say, it's a clock that will run, supposedly run for 10,000 years. Okay, you can have technological obsolescence. So this is when a technology uh, supersedes an existing technology. Uh, sorry, a new technology supersedes an existing technology. And the existing technology quickly falls out of use and is no longer incorporated into new products. Consumers instead opt for newer, more efficient technology to their products. So, you know, we can look at, at, at several versions of this. Uh, the um, Sony Walkman, right? You had a cassette tape and you had... You know, if you, you could listen to 90 minutes of music on that cassette tape, right? And that cassette tape, once you're done, well, if you had another cassette tape, you could listen to another 90 minutes of music. Then you, you know, later what came along was uh, CD players. CD players, uh, you could, could carry more um, music. And then finally the, the iPod. And the iPod could carry, you know, it was like... Um, just factors of 10 growth, right? It was it's magnet, uh, factors of 10 magnitudes of growth of, of the number of songs. So, you know, maybe this this one you could have, I don't know, 15, 20 songs, something like that. Uh, this one you could have like 30, and this you could have three, 400. And now with streaming services, you can have an infinite number of songs. You know, anything that's out there, you can have. So, you know, as the talk technology improved, no one's going back and going, you know what I really would like? I really like a Walkman. I think Walkmans are cool, and I, I would really like a Walkman. Or nobody's going back and saying, actually, I want a Discman. And and basically, no one's going back. Anybody who's using streaming services is not going back to their iPod, uh, you know, their first-generation iPod and going, actually, I'd like to use my first-generation iPod, right? Like, basically, the technology's moved on, and the rest of these have become obsolete. And the same with the computers, right? Computers have, have gone through the same sort of evolution, um, and um, older versions have, have become obsolete. Um, cars, same idea, right? You know, cars do become classics, like the Model T right here is, is a classic. Um, but, you know, you're not going to choose this as your everyday car because, well, it would be expensive to maintain. It's hard to get parts. It's not very tech. There's no air conditioner. There's no anything, right? It's, it's really a basic, basic thing. So most people would prefer a modern car for their sort of everyday functional car. All right, products over their life cycles, right? So um, you got to think of throwaway culture. This is an interesting video about that, right? Um, also, um, Moore's Law. Moore's Law is an interesting idea about the power of computing. Okay, so basically I think it's like every two years uh, the power of computers doubles. So that's kind of an interesting video to watch. Okay, we can have product versions. So these are other ways to increase sales of a product, right? So, you know, they're there for specific cultures and regions. So, for instance, this is an example of the Toyota 4Tuner. does not exist in America. In America, it's called the 4Runner. 
right? And, you know, essentially they're the same product. They probably have the same chassis. They probably have a lot of the same parts in them. But, you know, there's, these are two different virgin, uh, versions for, the, um, for different cultures and regions. And, you know, the Fortuner stands for Fortune, and the Forerunner is, you know, about its 4x4 capabilities. You can also have a range of products in the market. So, like, for instance, the Toyota Corolla is a cheaper version, version of the Toyota Camry, right? So the Camry is more expensive, the Corolla is, more, is cheaper, and, you know, somebody with less money who, who wants uh, a Toyota sedan is probably going to opt for the Corolla, and somebody with a, with more money who wants a you know a little more stylish, it's gonna it's gonna go for the Camry. But that allows um, Toyota to uh, capture market share in both areas. You can also have uh, products that go from a basic to extended um, version of themselves. So, for instance, um, with iPhones, you can have iPhones that have different capacity sizes of their uh, memory. So. You know, you can have ones that are 64, 128, 256. And so that's going to help to extend your product range also and therefore sales. Okay, and of course, colors and things like that will also help to um, extend product sales. Because somebody might say, well, I, I, don't, I don't want the black one. I want the, I want the red one. Right? So that's going to increase your sales. You can also have something called limited releases. And this is a classic thing for, for instance, um, um, sneakers, uh, shoes, right? Like running shoes. People have, there's people who, who have limited re releases of these shoes and people go crazy for them. Uh, my own children are obsessed with this idea um, when they're looking at these um, LOL dolls. So this is an LOL doll and this is apparently an ultra rare LOL doll, right? And so there's very few of them out there and so people will buy them to try to get the, the, the uh, limited and special release type doll. Okay, and this goes for shoes. This goes for lots of different products. All right, and that's it for today.